Hi y'all, this is Larry from Deep South Texas. And today, it's time to make another cheese. And uh, I'm going to make blue cheese today. So for this recipe, we're using two gallons of whole milk. So we'll get that two gallons in the pot. We'll put it on the double boiler and heat it to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is pasteurized, unhomogenized whole milk. So to make blue cheese, you need uh, a mold called Penicillium Rock 40, but uh, I don't have any of that. So I went to the store, and uh, grocery store, and bought some blue cheese. So I'm going to try to scrape out some of that, uh, some of that blue mold and use it in my cheese. This actually works pretty well. Um, Penicillium Rope 40 is uh, a very aggressive mold and uh, actually in the cheese making process I spend most of the time trying to keep this stuff off of my cheese because it's not you know wanted most of the time. So I'm going to try to scoop out of here Oh, something that looks like about a half a teaspoon. And I think that's going to be plenty. Then I'm going to mix this up with uh, some warm milk and then add it to my milk when it gets to the correct temperature. Just get this mixed in as well as we can. And set it aside until our milk is up to the right temperature, which shouldn't be too long now. So the milk is at the proper temperature. And so now we're going to add in uh, our mesophilic culture and we're using uh, an aromatic culture so flora danica and uh, the instructions the instructions indicate to put in a uh, quarter teaspoon per gallon of milk so we have uh, two gallons of milk here we're going to put in half a teaspoon Okay, we're just going to sprinkle that on top and uh, let it rehydrate for five minutes and then we'll stir it in. So I'm going to stir in the Flora Danica Mesophilic Culture. Get that all mixed in well. And then I'm going to uh, put in the Penicillium Rock 40. We harvest, we harvested from that other blue cheese. And get that stirred in as well. And now we'll cover that and let it set for 45 minutes to ripen. So our milk should have ripened by now. So now we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of calcium chloride that's been diluted in a quarter cup of water and the water has been boiled and allowed to cool. So we'll get that mixed in and the calcium chloride uh, helps pasteurized milk set up better. So that's why we add that. This milk has been pasteurized. Okay, that's all mixed in. Now we're going to mix in 
a half a teaspoon of rennet that's also been uh, mixed in with a quarter cup of uh, water that's been boiled and cooled. And the rennet is what sets the milk into a curd. So we get that mixed in thoroughly and we only mix for one minute because the rennet starts working pretty fast. And now we will cover our pot and let it set for one hour. At the end of an hour, the rennet should have set the milk into a curd. Well, our, our milk has been setting up for about an hour. It's time to check and see if we have a clean break. And uh, that looks pretty good. So now we are going to uh, cut the curd and what we want to end up with is curd that's cut into uh, between a half inch and three quarter inch cubes. So first we'll cut it this way. And now we'll cut it this way. And finally, we'll cut it diagonally, as best as we can. So the curds have been cut, and now we're just going to let them set for about five minutes to heal up. So the curds uh, that we cut into cubes have healed up. Now we're slowly going to be begin stirring them. If we see any big cubes, we'll cut them up with the edge of the spoon. And there are several. And uh, we will stir this for 20 minutes. And we're maintaining the temperature of uh, 90 degrees. Actually, I'm down to 89 right now, so I will be returning this double boiler back to the stove for a few minutes to warm it up a little bit here shortly. But um, we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to stir it initially for 20 minutes. Gently stir it. So we've been stirring for 20 minutes. Brought the temperature back up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And the curds look like this now. A little bit uh, larger than what we're normally going for, for curds when we're making cheese. But uh, we want uh, the blue cheese to be a little bit creamier than normal cheese, a little softer, and uh, we also want some air bubbles in amongst the cheese that will allow the uh, blue mold to grow in them. So now we're going to let this settle to the bottom a little bit, and then we're going to remove about a pint of the whey. We don't want any curds though.
Then we'll continue to stir the curds for another 15 minutes. So that 15 minute stir period is up and that's what the curds look like now. Now we're going to do something similar. We're going to uh, let the curds sink a little bit and then remove another pint of whey. So the whey has been removed and we do our final stir for 10 minutes. The, the purpose of removing the whey is to uh, try to help dry out the outside of the curd. We want the, uh, when we put it in the mold, we want the, the uh, cheese to form, but we don't want to have uh, exclude all of the air bubbles. So if the outside of the curd is a little bit drier, it helps in that regard. So we're done with our last 10 minutes of stirring. That's what the curds look like now. Now we will drain the curds. So I have a wire mesh colander here. Just drain the curds out into the colander and uh, we'll let those drain until we feel like they're dry enough on the outside and we'll come and stir them every so often. Well, let's give these curds a stir. I think they're about ready to go in the mold. So I have a, a smaller mold here than I usually use. This should hold uh, a two pound cheese. Let's see if we can get all these curds in there. Well, they just fit. And now I'm going to put the follower on and uh, press them very slightly with about, uh, oh, not quite two pounds of weight. And uh, let that uh, press for about 30 minutes and then uh, flip it over and press it some more. <laughs> it's, my uh, camera ran out of power, so I had to slow this down a little bit. My curds are pretty cold right now, but uh, I'm expecting that this is going to work okay. Well, it's been a half hour. Let's see if we can uh, flip this over without it breaking apart. Well, that didn't go too bad. And we'll put this on and uh, flip it over again in about an hour. And then we'll probably do that, um, flip it over every hour until, uh, until I go to bed. Okay, it's time to flip the cheese again can see it uh, continue to shrink a little bit. I will continue to flip it about every hour until about 10 o'clock and then I will put it in the cheese cave. Well, it's the next morning and my cheese has been in the uh, cheese cave overnight and the cheese cave is at um, 
54, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, about 12 and a half degrees uh, Celsius. And the cheese is looking pretty good. Lots of, uh, the, the rind is not fully formed, which is what you want. You want some uh, indentations leading into the center of the cheese so we can get that blue cheese veining throughout. Now it's time to salt the cheese. And uh, the amount of salt we use is 2.5% of the weight of the cheese. So we need to weigh the cheese next. Well, the cheese weighs one pound, 13 ounces. But uh, in order to get two and a half percent, I'm going to change that to grams. So that's 844 grams. Let's, uh, let's get two and a half percent of that. Well, that's about 21 grams. There's 22. That'll be just fine. Now we want to take about a third of our 21 grams of salt and salt the cheese. And uh, we're just going to salt the top and the sides for today. Tomorrow, we'll salt it again, we'll flip it over, and then do the top and the sides again. And we'll do that, oh, for three days or so. The salt helps, uh, obviously, give some taste to the cheese and helps preserve the cheese. And uh, the uh, blue cheese mold doesn't mind salt at all. <laughs> but some of the other molds don't like it, so it helps, uh, it helps with that process. They will be flipping this cheese every day, probably for the next two months. But for the next uh, couple days, we'll be salting it as well every day. So those are the tasks for the day. Put the cover back on. Go back into the cheese cave. Well, my blue cheese has been in the cheese cave for the last 11 days. And I have been consistently turning it every day and looking for signs of uh, the blue mold growth. After about a week, I did, uh, I did see a little bit and now it's been 11 days and there's quite a bit of growth on the cheese. So now it's time to poke some holes in the cheese and let that blue mold grow into the inside. We're going to do that now. And I'm going to be poking those holes uh, with a thermometer. So it's got about the right size uh, diameter on here. And this allows oxygen to get inside the cheese and uh, that blue mold, it needs oxygen in order to grow. I'm gonna punch holes in this side, then I'm gonna flip it over and punch holes in the other side. And there we have it. We have holes punched in both sides of the cheese. And we're going to put this back into the uh, ripening box, continue to turn it every day, and uh, in about six weeks we're going to cut into it and see how our blue cheese looks. Well my blue cheese is six weeks old and it's been in the cheese fridge maturing in this uh, ripening box. And every day I go in and uh, Turn it over 
and you can see there's some moisture on the top of the lid every day. I don't know if that's coming from the cheese or from the fresh air that I'm, I'm letting in every day, but uh, I wipe that off and I flip it over. And here's what it's looking like now. It's getting a little bit soft in the center. It uh, had blue mold all, all across the outside of it. So now it's time to cover it in aluminum foil and put it in the regular fridge to mature. But I'm going to take this opportunity to, uh, to cut into it and check and see how it's doing and how it tastes. So let's, uh, let's cut this baby in half. See if we've got any blue mold growing inside. That's pretty easy, pretty soft. And we do have some blue mold growing. It appears to be uh, mainly in the areas where I pierced it. But that looks good. I'd say... Uh, Let's, uh, let's cut off a little bit and try it. So it looks pretty good, somewhat soft. Mm-mm. Tastes like, like blue cheese. Now, we're going to, uh, like I say, cover it in tin foil, put it in the normal fridge, the colder temperature, and uh, it will help it mature a little bit more. But uh, at this point in the process, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Mm-hmm. So let's get this uh, this cheese covered. So I have some uh, tin foil sheets here, and we're just going to uh, wrap the cheese up in this tin foil. It uh, helps exclude some of the air and uh, slows down the mold growth while we finish ripening this cheese. And also, it goes into the normal refrigerator, so that uh, that also helps uh, with the maturing process for this type of cheese. So we've got that all wrapped up. We'll wrap up the other two quarters and uh, get them in the fridge. But uh, I believe it tastes pretty good right now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it that thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.